I, I think it's a very introvert concerto. It has moments when it opens up, but still the, the general tone of this concerto, I think, is it's very intense. It's not outward intense, it's inward intense. Uh, hi, I'm Daniel Trifonov. I'm going to talk a little bit about Rachmaninov Third Piano Concerto. So Rachmaninov Third Piano Concerto is one of the most uh, played, actually, piano concerti, one of the most uh, incredible music uh, that's written for piano in, in a piano repertoire. And it is perhaps his most comprehensive concerto. Out of his, I think it's probably my favorite, personally. Rachmaninoff's third piano concerto was first performed in New York on 28th of November, 1909. The third piano concerto is known to pianists for its great technical difficulty. Trifonov discovered this concerto at the age of 13. At the age of 20, he decided to play it at the prestigious Tchaikovsky competition in Moscow, before finally changing his mind. My teacher, uh, Sergei Babayan, he, he told me, if you do that, uh, I'm not preparing you for, <laughs> for this competition. You go, you go by yourself. He explained to me the, the dangers of that piece. This is a work that I, I feel like one should be ready both uh, emotionally and physically. I learned, of course, the first concerto later, and it was it took uh, some time, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a work that you keep, uh, as more you play, you keep, in a way, evolving the interpretation. Among the difficulties of the work is the cadenza, the passage that highlights the virtuosity of the soloist and which is found in many concertos. It is a favorite, but it's also a dreadful one. It works that, I would say, probably even takes more emotional powers than physics. It's a culmination of the first movement, and it has to be carried all by one instrument. So you already have an entire movement before that, uh, building up to that climax, uh, together with the orchestra, and then all that responsibility of that climax is on the soloist. What I think uh, is very good about this concerto, what it teaches the uh, pianist uh, who learns it, is a very long lines of phrases. In, in general, that's very typical for Rachmaninoff. If you look at his letters, uh, he uses uh, extremely long sentences. The same is true for, for his music, um, is that you have one idea that is, uh, that is being conveyed through uh, quite a long stretch of time and to keep that concentration of, of that idea and uh, wide breath of, of a phrase is something that I think this music actually can uh, teach a musician who is learning it. It is quite an experience uh, because uh, also it is quite lengthy work that requires a lot of concentration uh, from, from the soloist as well. Already before the, before the performance, it's just mind automatically goes a little bit into the world of the music. It's, it's how much you immerse yourself. In the case of music, like you, you, you have to really believe in, in what you're playing. Once you concentrate on the music, you automatically switch uh, your mind towards that sound world. It has s certain, uh, maybe even philosophical element uh, to it. This concerto allows you to always find something new. It has the capacity of uh, different angles. Mm -hmm. 